How to digitize your paper patterns by using scanning and then Illustrator or Inkscape to trace. This is a bonus lesson in my course, the complete projector sewing pattern course. So if you are interested in learning how to convert your patterns into projector ready files, please go see the link below. So here's option four if you're gonna scan it. We need to make guides so that everything fits basically in a sheet. So I just have a sheet of paper that would be the size that I need for my scanner. And then I can just not move everything. And I have a grid of a bunch of eight and a half by 11. And then I would number these so that you can put them in order. Be like one, two, no, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, um, you can also overlap these when you scan them in. So I'll go find a book to pretend that's the scanner. Pretend this ginormous thing is the scanning bed. Place this down, you know, face side down so you can see the, the markings. Match up as much as possible. Close the lid, scan it. We get that whole section. Now we need the next section. All right, put it on the scanner, make sure that it's as horizontal as you can for the grids, scan it, etc. for the whole piece. You're gonna have a lot of pieces, I'm sorry. If it's a small piece, like for babies or underwear or uh, sewing, uh, sewing, swimming, you can probably just do it all in one piece, right? If it's not nested, you're gonna have to do each, lay, each size on your own. This is the method on using your scanned images from a scanner, not a, not a, a camera to digitize your paper patterns. So first off, you want your layers windows open. You can go to window and find layers or press F7. And we're gonna click on the layer that the first size is going to be on. Now you can of course only do, you can of course do the three major sizes and then do grading in between, but that is a bit beyond what this course is intended for. Let's presume that you're going to be doing every single size. So if you had nested sizes, you just need to do the different pieces, the different segments for each piece tiled. If you have separate uh, patterns for each size, then you're gonna have to do each one individually and you can choose to do either pattern pieces or by the size, do all of the same, like the sleeve for 6T down newborn, or you can choose to do all the elements, the sleeve, the bodice front, and the bodice back for 6T. So we're, I'm gonna go only do one piece, but here we're gonna go to file, place, and I need to get the scanned image. So I have multiple scans, I'm gonna click here. Do not worry about how messed that up that is, I have a better scan. Place, I need to do two more or shift control P, probably could have done that. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to click. That normally would help, that was two. Shift control P, um, I need this one. So I'm gonna zoom in. You can see the difference between the left and right image. The left image, I didn't do a background at all, and it's kind of light. You can't see easily the border, so this is not a great candidate. The right side, all I did was put a piece of black paper or contrast paper behind this and then close the lid and scanned it. Made it much easier. I also put a line and hash marks from the top to bottom because I knew this sleeve would not fit on the entire uh, glass of the scanner. So I, after I scanned it and I made sure it was as horizontal as possible, which you can tell here it's not, I also did this pattern piece 
where I just moved this slightly so I could catch the rest of it. If it's bigger than that, you're gonna have to do multiple pieces. I discussed that in the tutorial on how to prep your pattern pieces for scanning. So in this case, we wanna try to make this as horizontal as possible. So I'm gonna lay down a line just by clicking the line and shift and drag to constrain it to horizontal. I wanna have this have an actual line that's black. So I clicked on um, this little tiny, tiny set of squares. So here, I'm gonna scroll in, click on the, uh, the actual image, press R for rotate, and then click on the corner here for the rotational centers. And then we can move the anchor up and down to um, engage with, or to align with uh, the line. Actually, now I'm thinking about it, I need to crop down here. So I actually really need to align with that line with the hash marks, the pink hash marks. I hope you're not colorblind. <laughs> the two hash marks here, one, two, three hash marks. So we're gonna do rotate R and you can actually choose a path here to rotate. And then we can move the corner down a little bit. And you can see now that's beautifully aligned. So I did this for a reason. The closer you get it to being horizontal, the less work you have to do. So you can right click and we're gonna crop this image. We wanna be fairly accurate because we don't wanna add any extra length. Okay, and then click out or press enter. And then we're gonna move this up until it aligns with the hash marks on the top part. So you can use the arrow keys to um, adjust. Oh, okay. So the problem is I accidentally placed this last. So I need to move this down. So I go right click and transform and say, oh, sorry, range and send it back. So now it'll be, it will be behind if the cropped portion that's already been straightened. So, from here, we have to get this picture aligned. We can, once again, so we can arrange these, the two lines to be uh, very close to each other at one corner and then line up, line up the lines on the outside that I need to trace. So I'm just using the arrow because this is a little bit easier and more accurate. I have a, my uh, gradations are like a 10th of a point for moving. So that's pretty good. We're still clicking on the top photo that we need to rotate, press R again, and then you can choose this edge here and then grab the corner and rotate it down so that everything aligns. That is beautiful. I'm gonna zoom out now. So now we can get to the actual meat of the matter, which is to trace. You can get the pen tool by clicking P. It's the Bezier pen if you're in on Inkscape. And we're gonna start off on one edge, one ed, edge, and then manipulating out the pieces. Um, of course, you can click and drag to make a curve. Don't worry if it's not super accurate, you can change this later. Perhaps we should make it so that there's no fill and that this full stroke is black, so we can see. Also, still no fill, there we go. We don't want fill because I want to see what's below it. I'm scrolling down to the end. Uh, I have scanned this at 300 DPI, so it's very uh, accurate when I zoom in. If not, it's gonna be much too fuzzy. So you can you can scroll in. I'm oh, sorry. You can scroll in, or you can press shift and try to make it horizontal, because we know that this should be generally horizontal. And then pull this all the way up. I'm just scrolling up and then complete it. All right. So once we have this done, you can go ahead and refine the curves by clicking uh, A, with, or the direct select tool, which will allow you to touch all of the the nodes or paths on. Um, the curve. 
So you can, of course, make this a little bit more accurate. You can move this piece a little bit more up. You can do whatever makes you happy. And then the last piece is going to be to delete those pictures and put a label here. So in this case, this would be the sleeve. And any instructions you need to transfer as well. Uh, the instructions and labeling can actually get moved up to notes. So you can actually right click and say, uh, arrange and send to current layer. The alt control L is something I set up personally for a shortcut. So once you have this done, you can go on to other sizes or other layers by just hiding this and clicking here and then doing the same process of place finding the pattern piece uh, and then placing and then clicking where you want it to be and then tracing that out once you've tiled it all together. So once you're done with that, go ahead and save it. Don't forget to save <laughs> all that hard work. And you should have all your pieces digitized. And I believe this is one of the most accurate ways of doing it without a projector. A projector is pretty accurate as well when you're tracing, but that's a different lesson. So, I am thinking, however, if you can get industrial scanners that scan blueprints, you might be able to, uh, you know, paste this onto a big sheet of paper and then go and get it scanned. And then you wouldn't have to do the tiling. But in this case, I only have a document scanner available at home. So this is what I'm going to do. If you have small pieces, you can just do it in its entirety and you won't have to tile. 